I'm Dr. Jay Halverson. So I'm a radiology professor at the University of Central Philadelphia. I've been here for about a year, um, and over the last year, um, my universities have been working on this very big project, which is the integration of musculoskeletal point of care ultrasound into our uh, doctor of chiropractic program. Uh, so the topics that I'm going to address in this conference, in this uh, uh, presentation, are how our youth institution designs and integrates innovative uh, strategies, how our institution ensures the integration of new technologies, um, kind of some of the um, uh, background and how um, students interact with virtual reality and augmented reality, um, hands-on training activities with advanced technologies and uh, the implementation of artificial intelligence into uh, learning. So, uh, so I am a chiropractor by training, but I also completed a three-year postdoctoral residency in, in radiology. And then I'm also certified in musculoskeletal sonography, so that's kind of how I came about um, into this position. Um, so I wanted to give a little bit of background about uh, chiropractors and their use of diagnostic imaging in practice. Um, about 47% of chiropractors currently use uh, radiography in their practices to some extent. Uh, however, radiography is inherently limited in diagnostic um, uh, utility. So it's limited <clears throat> uh, because it has poor sensitivity and sensitivity for many bone and joint pathologies, and essentially all soft tissue pathologies. Um, patient motion and technical factors uh, significantly limit the diagnostic quality of radiographs. Um, and X-ray-based imaging modalities increase patient risk for radiation-induced health problems. So diagnostic sonography um, is an answer to some of these problems when it comes to chiropractors um, and their use of imaging. So <clears throat> uh, the advantages of diagnostic ultrasound is that it's safe, relatively affordable, and requires very little physical space to use. Um, it has impressive diagnostic accuracy for soft tissue pathologies, usually approaching that of MRI for superficial soft tissue structures. Um, dynamic, <clears throat> dynamic maneuvers can actually be used to increase the diagnostic sensitivity of ultrasound exams. That's so what we've got over here is a ultrasound scan of the distal end of the quadriceps tendon. And you can see here that when um, the patient contracts the quadriceps, you can uh, get a little bit more sensitivity uh, for fluid inside of the joint. We just all this dark stuff on the indicator here. Um, patients are not exposed to ionizing radiation when they have ultrasound exams. <clears throat> uh, and uh, the technology of ultrasound is really uh, progressing over the years. So uh, currently, uh, probes are becoming more and more handheld. Um, and this one, as one that I use in my teaching in particular, it actually wireless, wirelessly connects to um, an iPad, which is very handy for teaching for instance. So um, what I have intended to do with our program is teach our students how to use point of care ultrasound in their practices. Um, this has a potential to benefit <clears throat> um, patient outcomes because the pathologies can be confirmed or excluded in real time during the physical exam. Um, student or the um, patient outcomes can then be improved because uh, we can initiate treatment earlier than otherwise. You have to refer for imaging. <clears throat> um, so uh, ultrasound training um, is obviously beneficial for the uh, healthcare providers in practice, right? Um, but uh, many uh, clinicians are unable to integrate it because they uh, do not know how to use it. So lack of training is one of the main uh, limiters to um, ultrasound use in practice. So when you first set out Central Del Cote, um, I don't know if you've heard of us before, <laughs> but we are a university here in Bayamon, Puerto Rico. We have the very first chiropractic program running as a parallel um, program alongside a medical school. So it is a four-year program. We have uh, the very first chiropractic school in Latin America to have full accreditation with the Council on Chiropractic Education USA. Um, UCC, um, over the last year, has been working to fully integrate musculoskeletal diagnostic ultrasound training into their curriculum, um, which is why I'm here. <laughs> um, so we have interprofessional ultrasound learning experiences between chiropractic students and medical students. Um, so we're kind of trying to unite these healthcare providers um, through their common interests in diagnosis and uh, management of uh, patients. <clears throat> So I wanted to talk a little bit about how to uh, go about integrating this type of innovation into your program. Um, so it all starts with a literature review, and you've got to know what you're doing first to make sure that you're doing things that work. <clears throat> um, there's actually quite a lot of literature um, about um, diagnostic ultrasound training in medical school, at least, but not in chiropractic school. So that's kind of um, a benefit of doing this type of program where we're at. Um, <clears throat> after you do your literature search, 
um, and uh, present or uh, develop a plan, you have to present these things to um, the interested parties, so administrators, uh, curricular committees, and faculty who are going to be involved. Um, seeking and acquiring funding for the new technology is kind of a process here. <laughs> um, the technology that I'm using was very expensive. Um, um, however, um, it was uh, worth the investment, in my opinion. I'll show you some pictures of how we've integrated it into the classroom. Um, but um, this uh, process is part of the um, integration of any new technology into the program. We've got to find uh, the monetary um, support for that. Um, so testing and training the new equipment. Um, so once we got our technology, it took about eight months to actually have our technology and licenses arrive on campus. Um, and at that point, I started writing assignments and assessment tools for our program. Um, the full rollout of technology in the classroom um, actually happened within the last two weeks. Um, so I'm very excited about this. <clears throat> um, we are actually live now with our um, MSK old cloud training. Um, and now we're kind of entering this phase of collection and dissemination of data. Um, so we can maybe um, uh, encourage the use of ultrasound and other chiropractic training programs elsewhere outside of Oregon. So what do we know about ultrasound training? Um, medical students enjoy ultrasound training. This is very literature. There have been many studies out there seeing how student outcomes are, what they think about their ultrasound training experiences, and they like it generally. Um, clinical knowledge, general anatomy knowledge, and physical exam skills improve when ultrasound is integrated into undergraduate medical training programs. Um, Hands-on training sessions are important in this training so that students can understand the dynamic relationships of anatomic structures uh, under the ultrasound probe. Um, this is one of the uh, big benefits of using this modality of practice. Um, virtual reality training tools um, can improve anatomy learning and outcomes in medical students. And e-learning technologies can reinforce manual skill development in medical students. So um, all of these things are uh, data points that I've collected and um, although there's not a lot of evidence for chiropractors in this uh, in this type of training, <clears throat> um, I figure that the correlation between medical training and chiropractic training, uh, maybe we can get similar results here. So um, we're kind of the first program to have this type of training involved in the undergrad uh, chiropractic training. So <laughs> um, my hope is that um, eventually we'll be able to compare um, outcome data between our medical students and chiropractic students since we'll be sharing these classroom experiences together. Um, so what's the importance of this innovation? Um, musculoskeletal complaints underlie a large number of primary medical care office visits, so between 10 and 40 percent, this number is kind of inconsistent when I think we deliver researches, um, but it's at least a large chunk of um, primary care office visits. Um, family medicine residency directors um, have uh, been um, investigated through survey-based research projects, and they've said that residents entering their programs um, are not equipped to handle common musculoskeletal complaints in their evaluation and management. <clears throat> um, the most common recommendation for this is for um, faculty to have more development than musculoskeletal point of care ultrasound training. Um, so this is the first fully integrated diagnostic ultrasound training program for chiropractic students, so there's a gap in the literature for student outcomes in this regard. Um, it is something that we're working on now so we can um, hopefully fill that gap in the literature. Um, so uh, this is the innovation that we uh, have done at the University of Central of Bay. Um, SonoSim is the program that we're using to train our students in diagnostic ultrasound along with hands-on ultrasound training sessions. Um, so SonoSim is a program that has online e-learning modules and virtual reality simulated patients that can train students for the hands-on component of ultrasound scanning. Uh, nearly 50 hours of online training modules and several hands-on presential laboratories are now uh, distributed throughout the required doctor chiropractic course with at University of Central Oregon. Uh, the predominantly musculoskeletal content was selected for clinical relevance to the general practice chiropractor. So our uh, medical program is also using SonoSim in their training. Uh, however, it's more focused for abdominal and thoracic pathologies. Um, our chiropractors were not really managing those in our practices for the most part. So um, I figured musculoskeletal training would be more appropriate for our um, trainees in this program. So um, in SonoSim, they have a curricular mapper where you're able to select uh, various modules with um, their outcomes um, and uh, try to fit it into a four-year plan. <clears throat> so in selecting the um, modules that our students are going to learn, uh, we kind of have the introduction to musculoskeletal within the first year, um, some of the basic soft tissue evaluation on ultrasound, 
And the second here, um, we go through all of its weights, so teaching them all of the soft tissue structures from a shoulder, elbow, uh, wrist, hand, hip, knee, ankle, and foot. Um, and then we also cover the vascular structures as well. So for BDT evaluation and other chronic clinical problems. Um, in the fourth year, uh, they have more integrative training with the medical program. So we're going to have them in labs uh, learning how to do joint injections. So chiropractors will guide the needles as orthopedists and uh, medical students in training um, to their injections. So um, this improves the uh, outcomes for those procedures in practice. Um, it was a little bit more tricky than just um, putting those 50 modules into the curriculum because as we know in education, um, time is kind of a valuable uh, asset into our program, right? <clears throat> um, so what I had to do uh, was look at our four-year curriculum and all the courses that our chiropractic students are taking. And I've identified um, several courses over the four years where we can integrate ultrasound um, and have it be consistent with the curriculum that's being taught um, in those courses. <clears throat> so the training is distributed into diagnostic imaging courses, anatomy courses, clinical uh, diagnosis courses, and then also the clinic training courses and electives. So um, the way that it ended up working out, and I'm actually glad that we uh, had this process and uh, distrib distributed it up through uh, many classes, because it gave me an opportunity to work with other faculty members from other departments. So I uh, pretty much single-handedly run the imaging department for our program. <clears throat> um, however, um, this gave me a chance to work with our technique department and our physical exam department so that we can um, integrate this knowledge. Um, so year one, uh, the topics that we end up covering uh, now that we have the integration in the individual courses are fundamentals of ultrasound and instrumentation and uh, introduction to musculoskeletal ultrasound in the first year. Um, so through the courses that are involved um, with these training modules and hands-on maps in year two. Uh, we covered sonographic anatomy of the spine and extremities. So um, a lot of the courses or the online modules are actually going into the advanced anatomy course. Um, which has a lot of evidence anyway for student outcomes that are augmented by the integration of ultrasound training. <clears throat> um, vascular anatomy on ultrasound one, uh, which is the abdominal aorta and IDC, just normal anatomy under the probe, um, is also covered in the second year. In the third year, uh, we cover common musculoskeletal pathology seen on diagnostic ultrasound. So I have a huge teaching library. I've been scanning patients for a long time. So I'm able to show some of these clinical cases that actually present to chiropractors. So um, really helps them uh, understand the utility of the imaging modality, what we can see and what we cannot see uh, with that imaging test. <clears throat> uh, vascular anatomy of the extremities, arteries, and veins go to the clinical diagnosis to the course in the third year. And then in the fourth year, uh, when our students are in their clinical rotations, <clears throat> uh, I have ultrasound uh, applications in sports medicine and ultrasound guided procedures as part of their clinic. So um, our program is kind of unique because um, our students actually rotate through hospitals as part of their training. Um, so we're not an isolated chiropractic school. We're fully integrated with this medical school uh, in our university. So um, here's a little bit more detailed distribution of how it went into the curriculum. And I'm not going to bore, bore you with too many details here, um, but just um, to um, show you which modules are going into which courses uh, in our program. So I quickly read over these slides. It's just a lot of words. <laughs> So overall addition to the ultrasound curriculum, uh, we have 49.75 uh, hours of interactive e-learning modules uh, through the Sonosim platform. <clears throat> uh, this includes 16 anatomy and physiology modules, five core clinical modules, and five procedural modules, including the injections. <clears throat> and then I have at least 10 uh, presential ultrasound scanning laboratories where students will actually have their hands up ultrasound probes and be working with me and the virtual reality patients. So the learner outcomes for this program um, students will develop logical clinical differential diagnosis for soft tissue complaints. Uh, they will develop the baseline psychomotor skills uh, for limited musculoskeletal ultrasound scans in practice. Um, students will appropriately select patients in clinical situations, which are most likely to benefit from the utilization of diagnostic ultrasound. Um, and students will attain basic proficiency in the interpretation of diagnostic ultrasound images. <laughs> um, feedback from my students, the interpretation is usually the hardest part. Um, ultrasound kind of just looks like um, like ocean waves if you're not familiar with the modality. It's really kind of difficult to learn. Um, but uh, my students in the fourth year um, are actually starting to do quite well with this. Um, the assessment plan. Uh, so we actually have assessments already built into the curriculum uh, through all four years, including the OSCE examinations and laboratories that are already parts of the courses um, where it's been implemented. 
Um, I wanted to show you a little bit about the uh, testing, uh, testing with software and equipment. So in Sonos, and we have several modules that are available for students to learn from. Um, so not only muscular skeletal content, but also uh, other visceral content, which is going to be used primarily by the medical school. <clears throat> um, there are clinical uh, training modules and then also procedure modules as well. So this is where we're getting a lot of our didactic training for our students in uh, the program. Um, this is what it actually looks like. Um, when students use one of these modules to learn uh, ultrasound. So they'll have little introductory slides. Um, they'll also have um, sections where it will show them pictures of the normal anatomy of the face. So it shows them uh, how to do the procedure, um, some uh, annotated uh, anatomy images and dynamic scans or kind of video recordings with um, audio. Um, and then uh, once they've done their um, didactic training, then they'll come into the laboratory with the uh, where they can actually workshop these skills. Um, at the end of each module, there is a mastery quiz, which they will use to um, kind of uh, make sure that they've attained the knowledge that they need to have. So there's a 20 multiple choice question uh, quiz at the end of every module, um, just to uh, make sure that uh, they've attained their knowledge. <clears throat> um, when Students complete their modules. This is how we uh, track the course progress. So um, here's all the modules across the top. And you can see that my students have already done um, quite a few of these modules and they're doing quite well um, with their muscular skeletal work or something. Um, <clears throat> this is the VR component of the scan. So you can see that we've got these motion sensing handheld probes and it corresponds with uh, probes on a screen where you're actually able to quote unquote scan this patient. So um, let me show you that one again, because I want to show you some uh, kind of details on this slide. So um, as the, oh, sorry. <laughs> so as the probe, um, yeah. okay, so as the probe is rocking back and forth, you can see that the ultrasound image on the screen is changing. So they're able to um, see visually what's happening in the scan and then also kind of train their hands to make sure that they're getting the appropriate probe movements to evaluate those again. Um, the uh, virtual reality patients have been digitized quite well, so they're actually um, easily scannable, and the anatomy is really quite nice. So these are high quality ultrasound scans. Um, when students actually do uh, their assessments, what I'll do is I'll assign an anatomic structure. So I'll say, identify the distal biceps, femoris, tendon, and long axis, and then the student will kind of maneuver the probe, try and find the anatomy, um, and then eventually when they do, um, they have to freeze the image, they'll annotate it with the structure and the imaging plane, and then uh, they'll save the image for me to later go in and evaluate it. So there's kind of an example of me annotating this image with the relevant information. <clears throat> and then as soon as it's saved, it goes into the online platform where it can be assessed by me using my assessment. Um, so as part of this process, I have to write a lab manual so that um, all of the structures that are uh, relevant to my course can be evaluated in the course. <clears throat> so this uh, elective course that I'm teaching to my fourth year students currently is kind of to catch our students up. We didn't benefit from the full rollout, um, but we're starting in year one right now, and those students who are going to graduate in June um, didn't get the benefit. So I'm giving them about seven weeks of labs here with hands-on training, and then I'm also I'm basically dedicating my whole class to a normal anatomy of the joints of the experiments. So um, the way that this looks, um, inside the manual, if you look through the pages, you can see that I've included some images of what I'm expecting them to capture and the annotations that are appropriate for those images. Um, these are the normal anatomy type labs. <clears throat> and then these ones over here. Um, so I uh, basically have pathology cases of able to also an ultrasound. So I'll say, if I do this ankle, I take the best picture of the pathology and tell me the diagnosis. So this is where we're testing their ability to interpret the diagnostic ultrasound images as well. So in the elective course that I'm teaching this semester for our fourth year students, I'm kind of covering the shoulder and the ankle. This is some of the most commonly uh, injured um, and complained about soft tissue structures in those joints. Uh, the assessment tools that I'm using to evaluate students with their same images. <clears throat> um, so I'm expecting them to um, identify structures of interest, use appropriate imaging planes such for the long axis, and making sure that they have um, optimal uh, image quality by having a perfect angular ground view, optimizing technical factors, and then using appropriate annotations and measurements. Um, so here's the class where I actually have the uh, technology being used with our students. So this is my elective course. And you can see that I'm in the front of the class over here giving a demonstration using our, our patients. <clears throat> uh, meanwhile, 
Um, our students are kind of sitting in the classroom over here, uh, handling their um, motion sensing probes in order to save their own images uh, that correspond to what I'm doing in the front of the class. Mm -hmm. um, so students are uh, very attentive um, in this process. They're enjoying the process so far. Um, obviously, I don't really have any like um, uh, research data. Um, I have an IRB project that they did approved recently, so it's going to happen pretty soon. Um, but um, students are um, uh, really enjoying the, the content so far from my experiences. So uh, you can see over here, uh, we've got laptops in each of the rooms. These two patients are scanning an elbow, and these two students are scanning a finger. Um, so just getting used to looking at the uh, anatomic structures. Um, as an instructor, uh, this type of uh, teaching format is really fun. I like, get to walk around the class, um, workshop with them, and then help them with the hands-on skills that they need to do these scans. Um, as part of the training, I'm also uh, moving around with the portable probe, which actually does a uh, normal ultrasound. So um, here's our VR patient, and then here's the real simulated patient. Um, so the uh, comments that I got from the students are, wow, it looks just like the one on my VR patients. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> uh, these are great uh, learning tools um, to use for e learning. So, um, so overall, um, students are getting hands-on uh, practice with real probes as well as the VR probes. I mean, it's benefiting them a lot so far, I see. Um, so once students see uh, these images, what uh, will happen at the end um, is that SonoSim will kind of build a little portfolio of all the structures that they've saved over the, uh, over the course of the, um, the course. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, I look at these images individually and then I grade them based on the rubric that I just showed. So is the structure identified well? Is it in the appropriate imaging plane? Do you have good measurements and annotations? Are the technical factors optimized? Um, and for the most part, students have been doing well so far. So we've got um, several more weeks of training uh, coming um, in that class, but um, my, my view is that students are going to continue to succeed when they're doing these scans. Um, what's also cool about SonoSim is the potential for incorporating artificial intelligence into grading these images. So um, AI um, has been developed where um, you know, if you look at these images over here, so here's a nice long axis view of one of the finger points, um, and then this is an image that I see um, myself. So the AI kind of looks at it and it says, okay, you're seeing the appropriate structures on this scan. Um, but if you look at this image down here, so here's the image that should have been acquired by the student, and if they give me something like this, then they're going to get little X's over here saying you're poor image quality. Um, so um, what's kind of fun about the artificial intelligence um, that anyone can use is uh, AI in their own teaching, um, you kind of know that these uh, algorithms need a little training to be optimized, right? <laughs> so sometimes um, it does not like images that I save, and sometimes I don't like images that it saves. Um, but that's just something that comes with the integration of um, these machine learning types of uh, applications. So uh, now we're in the dissemination of knowledge for um, MSK ultrasound training for chiropractic students and medical students for what we're creating. Um, both of them concurrently in the same classrooms. <clears throat> um, so um, here are some potential research avenues for our program that we're uh, working on. So do chiropractic students enjoy um, the uh, ultrasound training and do they find it going to be relevant? Um, how do medical student ultrasound educational outcomes compare to chiropractic student outcomes? Um, and are the anatomy exam scores and or physical exam skills augmented by the integration of this group? So um, I've already been around uh, kind of sharing this project. Um, this was me presenting at the World Federation of Chiropractic last year. So I uh, tried to get the word out about um, this training and why it's beneficial for our chiropractic students. My hope is that eventually we'll have more chiropractors able to do this school. So uh, here's an IRP project that I just got approved um, in December, uh, where we'll be exploring the uh, perceptions of chiropractic students and medical students and their management of musculoskeletal conditions as part of my elective course. So um, overall, um, I'm really looking forward to the future with this program. I think we've got a lot of exciting things coming, um, but um, I hope you enjoyed that presentation. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Um, now we're ready for a Q&A yes. um, session. For participants in the room, um, please say your name and institution before your question. And um, for participants, please write your question on the chat and include your name and institution. Question? Yeah, question for you. Yes. Great presentation. Very interesting. 
I'm Chris Harrison with uh, Lean for Campus. Uh, we are a corporate sponsor of X. My question to you with the introduction of disruptive technologies, specifically that are uh, because we're in the, in the field of ed tech, we see that, uh, that this, these companies coming out with these $2,000 old or some portable are really connecting to the mobile device. How is that disruptive technology helping or hindering the teaching in the chiropractic field for the detection of MSK and other conditions itself? Do you feel that it's helping in the future? It's going to help? It's going to disrupt in a positive negative way? Is it going to help scale the institution where you're going to see? A group of students instead of sitting around a faculty member or a professor showing them what once in the machine they can do it on their own and now you can search scaling. What are your thoughts? On that? Yeah, so I think the I, disruptive is a great word for that. <laughs> um, I think um, a lot of chiropractors aren't aware of the benefits of muscular skeletal ultrasound. So to have it integrated into a whole program like this um, is very disruptive. But uh, what I found is that because I do clinic training as well, so I sit in our cow patient chiropractic clinic, students are managing patients out there. And then they'll come to me and say, hey, like, what if I wanted to look at the, at the finger? What if I wanted to look at the elbow? So I have my portable probe there, and then they can literally uh, workshop with me before going and seeing their patient. So, um, so it's been uh, useful for them to kind of build confidence when they're talking about ultrasound uh, for patients because, um, you know, patients, they know much less than even uh, practicing chiropractors about what ultrasound is good for and what it needs to be. So um, I think it's benefiting students. Um, maybe I'm biased because um, I love radiology and I love ultrasound. So I love to see when students get excited about this type of technology. Um, on the other side, it, actually in the classroom, so when I'm using portable probes in the classroom like this, it allows students to see the connection between the virtual reality um, software that they're using to train with ultrasound and what a real life application could look like. So um, I'm trying to make it as uh, real life applicable as possible. Um, you know, I uh, had uh, just the, the other day, we had one of our clinicians who's dealing with a little bit of trigger fear. So we were able to have students actually scan their clinicians and identify the pathology that's in there. So the portable probes, um, they're limited in diagnostic accuracy compared to what some of the more like laptop based or one of the big ultrasound units that we're kind of used to see. Um, however, um, we kind of have to look at the costs and benefits, right? So with portability and with accessibility and cost. Um, these portable probes are really good for the educational um, setting, but um, maybe for real clinical practice, you might want to consider having um, better uh, or more high quality um, imaging technology. So, uh, so in the educational setting, I think that's great. I think for clinical application, um, there's more discussion that needs to take place with the students about what's going to actually be the best benefit for your uh, patient. Um, and really, uh, with point of care ultrasound, um, I'm not really trying to make these students radiologists, so I don't think that you know a student should uh, take. 40 pictures of their patients of all the structures in the shoulder. But I think that if they have a clinical differential and they say, hey, I think you're super spinatus night before, and um, it's easy to just drop the probe and see it right away in the clinical in the clinical setting. So um, so it has implications for clinical training and for educational side, uh, more of the didactic portion. Um, but overall, I think it's been um, a benefit for our students. And the reason why I bring this up is I went out of high school in the US recently, and in a biology class, um, teacher brought in one of these portable devices. And all of a sudden, you saw kids that had no intention of following biology and going to the medical field, mm -hmm. and now they're interested. Yeah. I found it so cool. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. The students really like it. Um, and uh, what's funny is that because I have, uh, I actually teach at another chiropractic school remotely in Missouri, um, in addition to my full time teaching here in Puerto Rico. And uh, the school in Missouri doesn't have as much ultrasound training as we have. So um, what I found is that I have so many students who are interested in progressing their education and becoming um, specialized in radiology like I have. So I mean, that's from the school in Puerto Rico specifically here. I think they really see the clinical application of what we're doing um, and the benefit that it can have for patients. So, um, so I think that's really cool. And that's uh, a great story. I mean, even in the high school setting, that's um, impressive that they're in creating this technology so early. The questions. Yeah, I was wondering if the students, when they um, um, integrate to the doctoral program, right? Yes. Um, do they have like prior skills related to that, or you just teach them mm -hmm. basic to? Yes. Uh, so I teach from the basic all the way to the oh, top. So I start with physics. Uh, my first diagnostic imaging course is all about physics of uh, uh, radiography and MRI, CT, ultrasound, and once they have that basic. Um, understanding of the modality and how it works in patient safety, that's when I start teaching them the anatomy of the clinical application. So um, so they start with nothing in terms of imaging, and then I start from ground ground zero, essentially. It's because you just said that maybe they're not, um, they didn't study prior drugs. 
study with him and radiology and and that could be something challenging for the instructor right and also for me it's very fascinating because you have used a technology that may be in comparison with this equipment this big equipment that mm -hmm. we usually see in the science you know department and not schools um it's it's a very good way to have it in so in the small yeah, equipment, right. you need a technician to come and you know and do all these uh, updates and and I found it very uh, fascinating and also to convert this the course to an online course without the for the student to yeah you can't substitute the the clinic practice right but yes well, I'm from distance learning so. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, I just say that the whole program you could offer it online, but then it probably because we already have this type of simulations. Yes, I agree. I mean, let's talk about the hands on things. Um, you know, uh, we keep on coming back to this portable ultrasound probe, but um, these uh, scanning probes with some of them are very inexpensive. So um, you only have to pay like, you know, a couple hundred dollars to have these motion sensing probes. And then uh, this is why I'm able to get every single student in my classroom with a hand on a probe. Um, normally, when we focus on training, training, there's one uh, scanner, and then we have like a group of students who are sitting around watching, and they don't get a hands on experience, right? So, here we're actually able to uh, get the students practicing and also um, helping them develop those skills, right? So, um, so yeah, and distance learning um, is something that I thought about a lot. You know, <laughs> it'd be nice to not have to, you know, devote so many hours of my day to go to campus and teach, you know, if I could do this remotely. Um, it's definitely in the conversation for future courses, yes. <laughs> Ship them the portable uh, ultrasound and get them, get them on a Zoom session. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the students can afford it, you know, it could be an alternative. Uh, yes. Because all these students, they spend so many hours in the hospital or center clinics. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.